Hey friends, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish, here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy GM Prep. In this weekly show, I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday role-playing game. I am running the campaign called The Gloaming from Curse Scroll 1 using the Shadow Dark our Curse Scroll 1 and the Shadow Dark RPG are available on the Arcane from the Arcane Library, Kelsey Dion of the Arcane Library. We're pretty deep into this campaign now. I don't know how many sessions we have but it's a lot and my players are still really enjoying it and i'm really enjoying it so so it's actually been a lot of fun and it's a fantastic system it's a fantastic setting i really really like both a a lot and it's been great fun to run and my players all who are all veterans right i think everybody everybody at my group that runs this are gms themselves and so we have a whole table full of gms And it's really interesting how much all of these GMs like this lightweight, fast, deadly system. It's been really enjoyable. People people are really digging into it. Even though we're veterans, even though we've all played 5e for a long time, even though we've played very crunchy systems, all of us are enjoying the lightweight nature of Shadow Dark and the sort of atmosphere that it brings to the game. So it's really really quite cool. This show like all of the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. Patrons get access to all kinds of really cool tools and adventures and source books and tips and guides, a dedicated Discord server, a monthly Q&A, a connection into the whole Lazy DM community. You get tons and tons of stuff for becoming a patron of Sly Flourish. It helps me, the, the patrons of Sly Flourish, help me get everything that I need in order to do shows like this keep my website up all of the other free stuff that i throw out there and i throw out a lot of free stuff is there because i'm able to get funding from patrons but patrons also get lots of exclusive features so please consider becoming a patron of sly flourish and to the patrons of sly flourish thank you so much for your outstanding support so where did things end we're getting we're so so the characters i think are getting like close to sixth level they're pretty far so we're running the gloaming right here and we'll pull up our map and they have now reached 11, area 1108, which is the do, 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 Marin's Hold. Marin's Hold is important. And I'm changing a little bit about what's going on here. One of the interesting things is the world has been evolving. So how the world has been evolving based on the things that the characters have done and the things that the characters have seen is interesting to wrap around new places. And one of the things they have here is that Tarly Winters is the reeve of Marin's Hold. And I, if you if you read about Tarly, Winters believes sorcery attracts demons. And he recently had three women. A, I changed Tarly Winters to a woman. And B, I, I decided that Tarly wasn't really the one in charge of burning the, the witches at Boot Hill, but instead was driven to do so by the, na- the Knights of St. Yidris, who operate nearby. They operate out of 1406. So we have kind of four locations here. We have Marin's Hold, Boot Hill, the ruined castle 1308, which is the Meyer Castle ruins where the Green Knights used to operate. And we have 1406, which is Greywall Priory, where the Knights of St. Idris operate. And those, and they're all on the way to the Vile Well, which is where Haldren is, is kept. So we're, we're making our way into this lower region. And, it, and then all of these places have been affected by, by what's been going on. As, as order has been disrupted across all of the gloaming with the rising of the, the, the teeth of Almazat and the the draining of Fenimir Lake, which the characters did cause. And all of this stuff, the Knights of St. Idris have, have gotten stronger. And some of their connection, like one of the things that I've been doing with the Knights of St. Idris is that they are actually a corrupted set of knights and they have sort of their own demonic influence going on. And, and now they're sort of more overt about that. They still claim like we are the cleansing light against all of the, the horrors that are going on in the world. But really, they're just demons. And the characters figured this out very quickly. So the characters made their way across the land. I don't think they... Oh, they met the hill giant named Frond. Swamp King Frond. Franck. Swamp King Franck. And Franck had Mugdalblub. And they convinced Franck that they would just hack his leg off. To get rid of the Mugdalblub's curse, because they say, well, you CRISPR, our, our, our sentient Mugdalblub cure is way, the f- way far away. So we're just going to have to cut it off. So they cut off his leg, 
one of the goblins that was carting around Swamp King Franck on his sort of floating litter recognized one of the characters and so they had sort of a reunion and that was fun but they were there was a lot of question of like are we gonna have to fight this guy or are we gonna just you know, deal with it and they, they they ended up just hacking his leg off and off he went so then they made their way across the bridge they made their way into Marin's hold they went into the local bar in Marin's hold which was which is known as the crayfish tavern and there there were a couple of knights of saint yidris hanging out but then also other people and the characters got involved and the, the, the knights kind of came up and questioned them strongly and as surprise, surprise, battle ensued. And it involved the character. The characters killed and beheaded the two knights of St. Yidris. And one of the characters is a former knight of St. Yidris. So he's claiming like, look, these knights are corrupted knights and I'm, I'm a true knight of St. Yidris and the, char- the, 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 the villagers who have been really thoroughly terrorized. Because I think like a third of the village has probably now been executed as you know witches basically anybody who dissents is a witch and anybody who's a witch is killed and so now so so then they actually killed and so but well somebody's going to run off and warn the other there are, there are six knights of saint idris here in Marin's hold and two of them were killed at the bar and one of their toadies was going to run off and tell the other four but they killed him in the street so they killed a villager who was a toady of the knights of saint idris in the streets at which point tarly winters shows up with a couple of villagers village guards who are not knights of saint idris and is like what what is happening here and that's sort of our strong start for today let us go into our campaigns we are going to create a new session planning template open it up i'm as always i'm using notion to do my campaign planning not as always because now i've been using a lot of obsidian but i'm still using notion for the gloaming because it's easy for me to talk about it here on the show and I have seen little reason to do otherwise. Lots of talk about Notion versus Obsidian. And I love both. They're both really good. I'm not leaving Notion. In fact, I have like a bunch of shared notes and notes that I share with my wife and stuff like that that we use Notion for. And I'm probably going to keep doing that. But my campaign planning, I've been really enjoying using Obsidian. So I think that I may be switching to Obsidian. And maybe on my next campaign, we'll, we'll talk about Obsidian. And I have a few reasons why I like Obsidian. Main thing is I do like that it's all local files. It's all markdown files. It's really easy to archive. And there's lots of like different ways that I can manipulate the things that I create using plugins and stuff like that so i just i like it it's clean it's fast it's cross-platform i can use it on my phone i can use it on my laptop and i can print from it i can do other things so i just i just kind of like obsidian however i do not recommend one over the other they are both excellent tools and i i do not like i've seen i think earlier today on the sly flourish discord server which you can join by being a patron of sly flourish that there was a discussion of like well why should i switch to obsidian and my answer is you you, you know if you have to ask the question you probably shouldn't <laughs> right like, like if your if your tool is good and you're happy with it I don't know that there's like there are definitely people who will say Nicole, who's on the show, right, has lots of different plugins and lots of different expandability. I actually don't use a lot of plugins and expandability. I like it really lightweight. And I can't say that I found other than like speed and the fun of working with text files again and the lack of having sort of like the performance is way better when you're dealing with flat files and then having tools that can manipulate flat files. And then, of course, the plugin architecture is really nice. I don't know if all of that is worth like the the trouble of switching over from one platform to the other. If you want to switch, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Should you switch? I would say probably not. And should you you should do what you dig. I don't think that it has anything so extreme that it's worth like making yourself switch over to it i kind of just like playing with new stuff and playing with new stuff got me to try notion in the first place and playing with new stuff got me to try obsidian so now and now i'm enjoying obsidian i'm using it for my two other my two other campaigns are both using obsidian and and i like it and it works really well it'll be interesting to see how obsidian works when i'm doing things like sharing my notes like i am now so we'll see what that's like. I mean, I, I, I suppose it's not difficult for me to pop open a new window and create a little thing that uses Obsidian, but it means switching between Obsidian and the browser as I go back and forth means I have to switch scenes and that's kind of tricky. So it's easier when it, because it's a web-based app and that's probably the number one thing that Notion has that Obsidian doesn't is Notion, it's both its advantage and its disadvantage. 
it is completely web-based, which means you can run it anywhere on any web browser, anywhere. Like, and a lot of people are like, you know, I like uh, popping into my notes and adding some stuff in the middle of work, and I don't want to install an application, or I can't install an application, but I can log into Notion at work, so I do that. So there's definitely people where the flexibility of having it in a browser is really beneficial. Then the other problem, though, is it's all hosted on a browser. And I noticed recently, like, I, I go through, and every six months, I download all of my information from Notion into flat files so that I'm backing it up. And I, I had some weird stuff where it was linking to like my artisanal database, which had like 4,000 monsters in it. And then that was downloading for each campaign. And it was like a nightmare where in Obsidian, you could just grab a folder and move it and you're done. So yeah. All right. Strong start. So our strong start is the bloody streets of Marin's Hold confronting Tarly Winters. We can drop Tarly Winters into our NPCs here. For fun, let's think about Tarly for a moment. So this is the, she's the head of the town. I think that she is, how strong is she? I don't think that she's like, you know, if we're going to go back to my old favorite of using characters from Deadwood, she's not Sheriff Bullock because she wouldn't, Sheriff Bullock never would have allowed, you know, if she was Sheriff Bullock, she'd be dead. She never would have allowed the Knights of St. Idris to take over the town. She's also not Al Swearingen, so she's neither of those. But she's not as weak as, as the mayor. I forget what his name is. So I'm trying to think of like a good character archetype I could use for her. And I, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of one from like m- movies or fiction. But basically, you, you have somebody who's trying to keep the village safe when it's also overtaken by horror, by, by horrible people, right? And she's, she's right at that edge where she realizes, like, we've lost a third. And every time anybody's, like, murdered and killed, she's still like, well, I have everybody else that I have to keep alive. And so she, she, she works with the knights. She doesn't oppose the knights. She also knows, like, if we oppose the knights, we're all dead, right? They can't leave because the knights will hunt them down, but there's also horrors out there far worse. So I think... You know, that's kind of her, you know, her mannerisms. She's probably in her 50s. And yeah, so I think I think she's stuck. But, you know, like one could argue, is she a collaborator? Kind of. Is she helping the people? And like, you know, she's help, trying to help those who survive. But eventually she's, you know, so I think she could be shoved right over the edge. But she's still trying to hold on to some semblance of having control over a situation that she doesn't have any control over. So I think that that's an important thing for for Tarly. I'm going to do another NPC since I'm down here in the NPCs, which is the another the 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 current leader of the Knights of Saint Yidris, Adeline Flametooth, is a dwarf commander. Adelin Flametooth is an opportunistic dwarf commander of the Knights of St. Idris in Marin's Hold. He commands the remaining three, which are Bernard, Eva, and Cashel. Just get some names. So that's, that's fine. One question is, so he is probably a reaver. I think they're, are they called reavers? One thing I should check is, is there a Knight of St. Idris stat block in Cursed Scroll? No. So then if we go into Shadow Dark, so we have Knights, the Knight stat block, which is on page 228. They're very flavorful too. So I had the, the Knight has this oath and I was like an oath by the Knight of St. Idris looks a lot like demonology. But I think there's also a more powerful like Blackguard kind of dude. I can't remember if they call them Reavers. I want to say it's a Reaver. It is not a reaver. The nice thing about Shadow Dark is they're so it's so lightweight you can actually skim through all of the monsters really quickly. Let's go back to the top. Do they have a is it they have drow? That's kind of nice. Neat. Stat block for a bad dude. 247, the Reaver. And they're pretty tough. There's level six. So we have the Reaver from page 246. They're like, you know, lots of hit points, three attacks with a bastard sword, D8 plus two, bloodlust plus two damage with melee weapons. You could also throw an oath on there as well just to make them really nasty. So any other monsters that we need? You can always use like bandits and guards, but I think we're pretty good. Treasure we're not going to worry about. 
I like rolling for treasure during the game itself. But let's get back to our strong start. So we have, oh, let's talk about the characters. I don't know who's not here today. I don't know who isn't in. So we have Morgan. So a lot of what's going on with Morgan. So we have a couple of characters that definitely have some, some key, some key connections in here. And one thing I ought to do is write them, write them in. So let's see, I'm just going to write the characters' names. So we, I'll, I'll do it while I'm figuring it out. So we have Morrigan. Morgan's mother was burned at the stake here by the people of Marin's Hold. And, and people recognize her. People, people say, oh, you're the daughter of, of Morrigan. You're the daughter of Gwendolyn, who was killed here. So that's definitely a big connection. Dazder is a human witch who actually is a witch <laughs> that carries the remnant of Mem- Memnon. We have Calum, the elf wizard. We have Lauren, the goblin scout leader. Uralt, the former knight of St. Idris. And Tribble, the halfling burglar. So I am going to write their names in my notes. Let's see how many I can remember. Oh, I remembered five of the six. Morgan, Tribble, Uralt, Lauren, Dazder, Calum. That was really close. Morgan is the human um, warlock... What is she? Elf Warlock. Tribble is the halfling burglar. Uralt, the former knight of St. Idris. Lauren is the goblin scout leader. Dazder is the human witch shaman, the human witch frog shaman. And Calum is the elf wizard. One thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to pull this out, and we're going to go modify my template I go in here, there. So now future templates will have the characters listed. I can always, as characters die, because they do, I can always modify the template. But it's an easy way to have that, that list there. The nice thing is when I print my notes, it's really handy to have the characters listed in my notes. So you've got that. So those are the characters. And the two two big ones, I mean, they all have like a good connection here. Like Calum and Dazder would be considered witches there and, and the knights would want to kill them. Lauren and Tribble, I don't think, have as strong a connection here. And Morrigan's mother was killed here. And Uralt is a former knight of St. Idris. So there's lots of, there's lots going on there. Scenes. We don't really have scenes other than the strong start. I don't know where it's going to go. So I'm going to yank the scenes because I don't. Scenes is like that. I mean, I guess the, the, the handy part is like, well, where could they go? But really, that's, is that scenes or is that locations? And the locations are like Marin's Hold. And I can actually put page numbers down from Curse Scroll. That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be handy. We have Marin's Hold, Boot Hill, and Greywall Priory. Those are our fantastic locations. And the well, the vile well. So we can link to those. And I think I already printed out maps for all of these places in my campaign book. I don't know where my campaign book went. But I think in my paper copy of the campaign book, we have it there. So, I, yeah, so I, if I have those locations, I don't really need scenes because they're going to travel from one place to the other. So secrets and clues. I also don't need to put my session notes in here because it's going to be printed in paper. So one of them is that Tarly has been trying to say to keep the people of Marin's Hold safe, recognizing that the Knights of St. Yidris would kill everyone in the village if she didn't. That's probably a lie. The Knights... The Knights of St. Yidris believe, I think, I think they've become sort of an Armageddon cult at this point where like they're, you know, those who are cleansed can escape the teeth of Almazat. Like what's their plan? So the teeth of Almazat are closing in. I don't think they think they can stop it, but is it sort of like a rapture, a rapture cult where like, you know, those who are pure of heart will survive, will, will be sent to a better place. Those who are not shall be burned. It's a little too on the nose. But I don't think their goal is to stop. I don't think that their goal is to stop the coming of Almazats. The knights believe the sins of the people of the Gal- are to blame for the coming of Almazats. So one thing, so we have the... So I think that, that yeah, St. Yidris whispers to the knights, not figuratively, but actually, but literally. St. Yidris rests beneath 
Gray Wall. Seeing so you just rest beneath the Gray Wall Priory. The Knights of St. Idris are commanded are led by a brother and sister. By brother and sister knight commanders. And these, let's see. I don't because I don't think there actually is. Um Mantor Wolfbright. Mantor and Lynette Wolfbright. Put them in our NPCs. Knight commanders of the Knights of St. Idris. Do I have like a single NPC page? Did I do that for this campaign here? I did not. I still have my normal. I don't have an NPC list. That's unfortunate. Oh, well. I've changed how I'm handling NPCs in my notes. So in the ye olden notion times, like we are doing here, I have like all of these cards and that's great. But honestly, I don't check it very often. I don't actually go into these and like look up their stuff. I really just need like a name and a maybe like a few words about each NPC, even for the big ones. The rest are internalized. So now instead I have a single page and the single page has the name of the NPC in alphabetical order and a one line description of who they are. And then what I do is I separate them out to current NPCs and previous NPCs. So I have like, who are the ones I need to be paying attention to? now so it makes it much easier and faster and i can print out one sheet that i can bring with me that has the names of all of the npcs that are important to the campaign i keep the previous ones around because you never know if they're going to come back but i highlight the current ones so that i know who the current ones are and that way i don't have to keep like a database of npcs so i've actually simplified my my prep uh, since switching over to obsidian because i like a i like to print it out now i like to have printouts of my stuff in my games even for my digital games and um, I want to keep everything simple. So it turns out I don't need as much as I thought I needed. These secrets, by the way, we are going to turn into bullets because they work better as bullets. That was what I wanted. There we go. Because that way it prints out nicely because I'm going to print this out in the end. So what else? The, the, the knights. So we had some secrets from last time. Let's take a look at those secrets and see which ones made their way across. Many centuries ago, Denizens of the Fae, Dance with the Mortals of Gloaming. That was pretty good. I like this secret. I'm going to keep that. Let's grab all these and let's throw them into my current notes and then we can delete the ones I don't need. Hey, my mom is here. Hi, mom. So yeah, that many centuries ago, the denizens of the Fae danced with the mortals of the gloaming. The results were the green knights. Their ancestors reside at the Barrow Mounds. I think they skipped over the Barrow Mounds. I think we, we decided that they didn't go to the Barrow Mounds. So we probably don't need that, but it's, it matters for the other one. The well leading to the Shimmering Valley, an underground bottomless rift and a vast cavern. Weird spectral tendrils rise up from the bottom. Yes, Haldrin traveled to the village of Nighthaven on the edge of the Shimmering Valley where Orc followers of Gidi, the god of feasts, mirth, and wilds reside. Yes. Uh, a narrow path along the Shimmering Valley leads to an underground keep known as Last Watch demonic keep of the shimmering valley this keep is the lair of the followers of ramlot the pillager or ramlot of the horde villagers of nighthaven defend themselves against the demonic worshiping orcs of ramlot who have taken over last watch the orcs of ramlot worship at an altar to their dark god lots of stuff haldron having heard this look at all these things spies of the knights of saint yadris warned the orcs of ramlot of the sorcerer's coming and suggested he make a wonderful sacrifice to the bloody dark god Kytheris is willing to call back Almazots if he has proven... Yeah, so they... I don't... This didn't come up because they didn't go to the right place. Or they did not not go to the right place, but it didn't come up because they didn't go there. I don't need this. Marin's Hold is regularly attacked by Skrell demons. We did that. Olgar the Glabrizo is in league with St. Yidris. Is Olgar... Is the demon... Is Olgar a demon of Ramlot, right? Let's see. So we can do this. A demon... A Glabrizo in service to Ramlot. Rules over the orcs of last watch way too many secrets so who is the demon that has taken over for saint yedris will be a good demon name ursul Mulkabir. i like that one Mulkabir is kind of cool saint yedris has been hollowed out by a demon known as Mulkabir. i think that there's a powerful demon thing in cursed scroll that we could use as a stat block for this guy. It's the dude that's on the cover. A Drela. Tall as two humans with a pair of curved horns, a shark's grin, and an axe of white bone. A Drelic named Mulkabir. I don't know how to spell it. D-R-A-L-E-C-H. And we'll put the Mulkabir. And he's on Curse Scroll 1, page 46. But I don't think I'm going to be using that dude anytime soon. I got piles of secrets. Oh, did I put all these under NPCs? What did I do? I put them in the wrong place. Look at that. Well, I don't need this. There we go. Dang. Imagine where we'd be without copy and paste. 
So I have way too many secrets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. I have like almost twenty secrets, which is too many. I think it'll be fine though. Sly Flourish's pile of secrets. Yeah. This is too many. Because it's hard to read. So let's take a look through them here. Tiling Winters are trying to keep people memories hold. Safe. Yeah. Nice to see Andrea. So we're at least focusing them around where they are. The only thing, so I think this is like a quest, and they can decide whether to do it or not. The only way the knights will leave the people of Marin's Hold alone is to wipe them, is to end their reign and kill the two knight commanders, perhaps even ending St. Yidris himself. So I have too many secrets, and then what do I do? Add another secret. I think we're going to cut this guy i don't need that that's all fine those are all good those are all good secrets and we've got our locations with our maps and descriptions i don't know so let's see i haven't filled out any of these places yet and i, I don't know which one they're going to so i'm i would have to do it kind of by the seat of my pants so they might head straight to the gray wall priory this guy let's save i already have a printout but I don't think I have, I don't have a printout filled out yet. So let me jot down some locations. So we're going to start with the upper left map. Let's see. Temple interior. We'll probably cut off that part of the back. I don't think that that really matters. How are they connected? Uh, so the temple interior has carved statues of the knights. We probably have murals of battles, knights against demons and we have guard barracks uh, we have shrines to saint yidris there's probably a few of those shrines any other things that we that we need here what else what other kind of things would be in the temple interior of the knights of saint yidris an armory would probably be there a war room then we have the under temple here's where some creepy stuff goes on we probably have a prison a dungeon Dungeons, dungeon and, and interrogation. What would they call it? A cleansing room? That sounds terrible. We like that. We have uh, an artifact chamber. What, the chamber of relics? So the under temple. What kind of chambers would be in the under temple? We have one, two, three, four. We have about seven chambers in there. It'd be nice to have seven places. Dungeon and cleansing room. Statues of the other saints. They're probably defaced because the current saint doesn't want... Mural of the battle between St. Idris and, what do we call him, Malkabir? And the secret is that Malkabir won. One, two, three, four. What other kind of things would we have here? We have a chamber of relics. We have the dungeon and cleansing room. We could have a separate, we could have a dungeon and, a, and the cleansing room, two separate places. One, two, three, four, five. What else? meditation chamber the inner chamber of the inner circle and then we have the crypts right the catacombs and for the catacombs so let's see which they, they go down this way this is let's see how is this coming down yeah okay so this is directly under this room to the right that's the stairway that goes down the room to the right and then they enter here and then they go and there's like secret passages and stuff and then they go down into the crypts and so that first chamber would be that centermost chamber we have a chamber of guardians. We would have urns of the of heroes. We have the ironbound sarcophagus. Like what catacomb would not have a vampire that they've trapped in an, in a cold iron sarcophagus who's just screaming? That'd be pretty. That's creepy. They got creepy stuff in here. Altar of the true god, and we'll have Saint Yidris's rest of Saint Yidris's devoured because he eats people. The Vault of Wraiths, which is actually going to be right before the Ironbound Sarcophagus. Vault of the Damned. The Cleansing Pool. So that's pretty good. Lots of locations. So what I'll do is at some point I will uh, print that out and I will write all of these names on it and then stick it in my notes, particularly if I know that the characters are going there. But in the meantime, I have it handy if I, if I happen to need it today. So we're all set there. And I think let's do have one last look at our notes. Do, do, do. 
I got the characters. I have a strong start. I got a pile of secrets and clues. I got some fantastic locations. I got a couple of NPCs and some monsters that are highlighted. And the rest of that, we leave to the game itself. So I feel pretty good about it. I'm excited for where things are going to go. Friends, I want to thank you all for hanging out with me today while I prepared for my game. If you enjoyed this show and you want more stuff like this, please consider subscribing to the Sly Flourish newsletter. You get a free adventure generator for signing up, and you get a free RPG-related email that has links to all of the other work that I do by signing up. It's absolutely free to sign up. You can also join the Patreon. Patrons get access to all kinds of cool things, dedicated Discord server to hang out with other lazy dms a monthly q a to ask me questions about rpg related stuff plus a bunch of tools and a bunch of adventures and source books and tip books of tips tons of stuff you get for being a patron of sly flourish and you can pick up my books return to the lazy dungeon master the lazy dms workbook lazy dms companion forge of foes and the various fantastic books at the sly flourish bookstore links for all of that are in the show notes thank you so much have a great day and get out there and play an rpg Bye bye